physical geology is the scientific study of physical features of the earth's surface. Landforms are developed by various geological processes which are active over the earth's surface. There are both uh, exogenous and endogenous geological processes which will be creating these landforms. The notable geological processes which are acting over the earth's surface are weathering, mass wasting, erosion, transportation and deposition. These are all the geomorphic processes which will be sculpturing the land surface and creating varieties of landforms over the earth's surface. A geological agent is an earth's mass movement mechanism which is capable of eroding, transporting and depositing the mass removed from one place and deposited in another place. And uh, these uh, activities like erosion, transportation and deposition are under the influence of the various uh, interactive mechanisms expected between the atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere. So, a geological agent is capable of carrying out erosion, transportation and deposition of different earth's materials from one place to the other. The notable geological agents uh, uh, which are working over the earth's surface are the running water, glaciers, waves and currents in the coastal zone, ground water, wind and uh, lakes. Today, we are going to see the geological action of wind over the earth's surface. All of us are aware that uh, wind is a powerful geological agent which has got an effective force of uh, removing material and mass from one place to the other. Wind has got the effective force of removing mass from the earth's surface. Even with little velocity, wind can remove the finest particles present over the earth's surface and they can be deposited in some other place. Wind is capable of eroding, transporting and depositing the uh, dusty materials and sand grains in different places. Wind is also a part of weather. A hot uh, moist day may suddenly become colder uh, depending upon the wind blow which we have on that day. A hot moist day may suddenly become cold if wind blows from a cool area. Wind may also blow the clouds away and the rain may disappear from a place. Wind also can carry a storm to greater distances. Winds are named according to the direction and also the speed. And wind has got its own velocity. Depending upon the direction we can say the uh, wind is uh, blowing or flowing from one place to the other. So if a wind uh, uh, flows or blows from east to west, we can call that wind as uh, easterly wind. If a wind uh, uh, blows from west to east, we can call that wind as westerly wind. And depending upon the speed also, we can classify winds into different categories. Uh, gentle breeze uh, will always have uh, roughly about 12 to 19 kilometers per hour velocity. And if the velocity increases to 39 to 49 kilometers per hour, we can call that as a strong breeze. And uh, gale is a wind which has got a movement of 550 to 100 kilometers uh, per hour. And uh, storm has got a velocity of uh, uh, more than 100 to 110 kilometers per hour speed. And hurricanes will be having a velocity of more than 110 to 120 kilometers per hour. So, depending upon the velocity, the action of wind can be expected over the land surface. Erosion uh, is the process of removing uh, material from one place to the other. And it is a mechanical or chemical destruction of the land surface materials and removal of these materials by various geological agents also. Aeolian landforms are the landforms developed by wind. So, the wind formed landforms are called Aeolian landforms. And today we are going to see the Aeolian landforms developed by wind. Wind is uh, air moving across the earth's surface. Wind may also blow so slowly and gently that it can hardly felt by us. Or it may blow very fast that it can smash the buildings and pushes over larger masses also or trees also. Sometimes 
trees may be falling down depending upon the movement of the wind. There are strong winds uh, which can wipe up the great oceanic waves which can even break the ships uh, in some of the uh, places. And uh, wind can also blow away soil from farmlands and uh, can also spoil the crops which are grown, grown in the farmlands. And uh, sharp uh, uh, grains of uh, dust carried by wind uh, can wear away rocks and uh, materials which are present over the earth's surface. And uh, the work of the wind uh, comprises of various uh, processes like uh, deflation, corrosion, and transportation and deposition. And all these processes of wind like uh, deflation, corrosion, transportation and deposition are all interrelated to each other. And uh, these uh, uh, activities of wind uh, are very uh, active over the deserts and continental landforms. Deflation is a process uh, which can be able to blow out the rock masses uh, from the basement uh, rock. And uh, deflation means uh, blowing out and scattering of rock particles by wind. And uh, the term uh, deflation comes from a Latin phrase called deflare, which means uh, blow away the material. The surface of deserts is uh, always covered by diverse fragments of uh, rock materials and uh, sand. And these materials uh, will be removed by the blowing action of uh, air, uh, which is coming from the jets. And uh, sand and other rock particles can be removed by this uh, air. And deflation first clears the uh, sand grains and also the finer particles which are present uh, uh, nearer the surface. And, uh, they will be leaving the coarser fragments over the surface. Sometimes uh, these boulders will also be forming the rocky deserts, which will be uh, left by the wind, uh, which have not been carried out by the ca carried away by the wind. And uh, such rocks are again fragmented and also uh, weathered by the other geological processes. And then subsequently, the worn out materials will be carried away by the wind uh, through deflation. And deflation is a process. Uh, which can be able to be expected over the dry lands uh, where wind action is always there. And the second process of wind uh, which will be active for erosion is the corrosion. Corrosion is a process of abrasion and uh, the particles uh, which are removed by wind uh, uh, from one place will be forcefully hitting the rock mass at another place. So the action of wind in association with the particles transported by the wind is called as corrosion. Corrosion is a forceful action of sandy particles carried by wind and the uh, forceful action of these sand grains uh, over the rock bodies will be able to remove some finer materials above the surface and that action is known as corrosion. And uh, corrosion can do many activities above the surface of the rocks. And uh, corrosion can create grooving, scarring, polishing, and grinding activities over the rocks. And the intensity of corrosion uh, depends on the size and density of the carrying materials by the wind and also the nature of the material present uh, over the rocks. And if the rocks are very soft, uh, the removal is very rapid. Venti facts are the structures uh, created by the activity of the wind. Most of the uh, activities are done by the wind uh, in association with the existing rocks. And uh, the rocks uh, that are exposed to the sand blasting of the prevailing winds uh, become pitted, grooved and polished by the activity of the wind. And uh, the facets uh, which are present uh, uh, towards the direction or along the direction of the wind will be formed uh, in the form of uh, uh, a structure which will be having the striations uh, along the wind direction and that will be called as ventifacts. So ventifacts are the striations created by the wind blow over a rocky surface in association with the materials transported. Here we are seeing some of the landscapes and ventifacts created by the action of wind over a plane. And ripples can also be generated by the wind over the deserts. And ripples are the uh, movements uh, shown by the wind and uh, ripples are the uh, landforms or landscapes created by the wind over the desert terrain. When we talk about the movement of wind over the sand bodies, we will have to speak about the windward and leeward side of the wind uh, above the sand bodies. And uh, this particular diagram shows the windward and leeward direction 
of a wind which is moving along the sand body which will be uh, sculptured by the wind. We are also speaking about uh, the slopes of uh, the sand bodies which will be uh, placing uh, the materials from one place to the other and uh, the slope may be gentle in one side and it may be steep at the other side. Depending upon the activity or depending upon the mobility of mass, uh, the slope will be varying with reference to time and space along the uh, deserts. In some places, larger hill sized features uh, sculptured by the wind are called as yardangs. These feature uh, is a very typical feature which can be expected over the uh, plains and uh, wind erosion over the hilly or rocky outcrops will be creating these yardangs. And uh, these yardangs are common in deserts around the uh, uh, places all over the world and uh, they can uh, uh, also be seen in Mars and other uh, uh, planets. And uh, here you are seeing the fine dust uh, removed by the wind and deposited in another place and uh, the nature of the particles uh, removed by the wind uh, can be seen in this diagram. The windborne fragments uh, are uh, normally taken away by suspension uh, in the air and uh, they are lifted roughly about a meter and a half uh, above the ground surface and wind can sometimes create valleys, cliffs and ridges over the land surface. World winds uh, can be uh, spirally moving the mass uh, which you might have seen in different parts of the lands and world winds uh, are the spiral motion of wind particles in deserts also. And uh, depending upon the nature of the rocks present over the earth's surface, the action of wind can be varying. And uh, in hard rocks or soft rocks, uh, the activity of the wind will be differing uh, depending upon the resistance of the rock bodies which are present. Depending upon the hardness of the rocks, deflation or corrosion will be removing the mass. And if the rocks are already deformed, uh, then uh, it will be very easy for the wind to carry away the materials in suspension and uh, transport them to distant places. Alternating beds which uh, will be having hard and soft rocks in sequence will be having differential uh, rate of erosion by the wind also. The soft rocks will be eroded by wind very easily and the hard rocks cannot be very easily eroded. So depending upon the nature of the rocks present over the landscape, uh, the erosion will be there by the wind. And uh, the hard and soft rocks will be forming different beds and bed like structures over the earth's surface. Sometimes we will be able to get mushroom like structures wherein the resistive hard rock will be at the top and the eroded uh, soft rocks will be at the bottom thereby we will be getting a structure like a mushroom. And uh, in some places depending upon the presence of the iron and manganese minerals which will be acting with the water vapor present in the atmosphere there will be a thin film like uh, substance created above the surface which will be forming like a polished varnish which are called as desert varnish. So desert varnish is a, a typical structure which we can expect over the rock bodies where wind action uh, in association with the water vapor uh, present in the atmosphere will be creating a filmy surface which will be very hard enough and that will be standing above the uh, land mass. And desert war varnish can be seen in some places where a typical rock containing iron and manganese minerals are present. Uh, the wind action is promoted by various other reagents also or factors also. The notable factors which can contribute for wind erosion are the climate, the weathering and uh, the absence of vegetation in a place and the absence of rain water and moisture. As and when we get rain water, uh, the rain water will be acting like a geological agent separately. So wind uh, will not be able to lift the materials away because most of the uh, water saturated materials cannot be lifted by the wind. The next uh, process of uh, uh, the g action of wind is the transportation. Wind can also lift particles from one place to the other and uh, uh, the velocity will be controlling the movement of these particles. At wind velocities up to 6.5 meters per second, a dust uh, or fine sand of uh, 0.25 millimeter diameter can be carried away from one place to the other. If the velocity increases to about 10 meters per second, uh, even sand grains of uh, uh, 1 millimeter can be lifted away from one place to the other. And if the velocity of wind uh, uh, increases to about 20 meters per second, 
then particles of up to 4 millimeter to 5 millimeter diameters can be transported from one place to the other. And uh, hurricanes, uh, particularly hurricanes are uh, very effective uh, and uh, destructive uh, winds and uh, hurricanes can carry even small stones from one place to the other. Uh, the dust of uh, African sand uh, uh, bodies or deserts uh, can be transported uh, by strong trade winds uh, up to a distance of uh, 2000 to 2500 kilometers away from the uh, place of origin. And sometimes the dust particles uh, which are transported by the hurricanes will be spread over the atmosphere and they can even obscure the sunlight which are falling over the land also which can be seen in some places. And uh, the sand uh, movement along the slopes uh, by natural action of gravity or by the action of wind uh, is called as saltation. And uh, saltation is the rolling, up, rolling down of the uh, sand grains due to little uh, velocity which is created by the uh, wind. And uh, wind movement along the slopes can create saltation. And wind drives the airborne materials uh, from uh, uh, one height to the uh, slopey land and then they will be bouncing down on the floors. The desert landforms are the landforms generated by wind uh, are classified into uh, sand dunes, loess deposits, blowout deposits or desert pavements. The sand relief forms uh, which are classified based on the sand relief forms and wind conditions are uh, like this. One is the Barshan uh, sands, the second one is the overgrown sands and the third one is the dune sands. These are all the sand relief forms which can be expected in different places. And uh, the first uh, feature, erosional feature of a wind is the Barchan sands. Barchan is a Turkish term and uh, it denotes uh, the asymmetric crescent shaped dunes which are existing perpendicular to the prevailing uh, wind direction. And uh, uh, the wings uh, of these barchans are extending along the direction of the wind. And barchans have a long and gentle windward slope also. So barchans are uh, crescent shaped uh, sand dunes which can be expected over the land surface and they are all asymmetric uh, uh, in shape. And barchans uh, uh, can be uh, uh, depending upon the direction of the wind and also the nature of the material present over the sand dunes will be uh, occurring alone or in association with additional number of uh, sand dunes also. And uh, the height of these barchans may be ranging from 1 meter to 15 meters and also the width of the barchans may be about 40 to 70 meters also. And the barchans also may occur in groups or barchans may be compounded to form a ridgy sand body. And the next uh, uh, feature which can be expected uh, by wind uh, are the dunes. A dune is a mound or ridge of loose sand that has been deposited by wind. Dunes are common in all sandy regions and they are all uh, found along the coastal regions, near the river banks and also lakes and also in some of the deserts. So dunes uh, may be long and narrow or shaped like a crescent also. Uh, some uh, dunes have three or uh, more ridges that extend to from a high central peak also. In some areas, large dunes uh, may reach up to a height of uh, 300 meters also. Dune fields uh, may contain one or more dunes uh, which will be in association with the other dunes and extremely large areas of dunes uh, in the Sahara and other uh, deserts, uh, uh, we call them as uh, dune fields. Dunes always will be uh, migrating from one place to the other depending upon the uh, movement of wind and many dunes migrate across the land and uh, wind removes the sand grains on one side of the sand and deposit at the other side of the dune. Many uh, dunes migrate across the land as the wind uh, removes sand grains on one side of the dune and deposits them on the other side of the dune. The migrating dunes can block uh, roads, uh, houses and destroy the agricultural lands also. And uh, the next activity of wind is the deposition of the materials uh, carried by the wind from one place to the other. And uh, the deposition of the moss by wind uh, may create two types of uh, uh, structures or landforms. One is the lawyers, another one is the takirs. 
Loess is a kind of silt that forms a fertile topsoil in some parts of the world and loess consists of uh, tiny mineral uh, particles brought by wind to the places where they now lie and loess is a depositional deposition landform created by wind and loess uh, contains uh, mineral particles which are finer than the sand uh, uh, which can be uh, expected in other sand dunes and the top soil is made up of uh, uh, very fine particles and uh, such uh, uh, regions can be seen in the central uh, and northwestern parts of the United States and in the central and eastern part of the Europe and also in the eastern part of China. So, lawyers can be seen in different places and especially the finer particles will be containing the minerals which are typical uh, for erosion and uh, transportation by wind. And takirs are the flat, uh, smooth, clay desert patches which can be expected uh, to be formed by the wind at the time of deposition of these materials and uh, most of the uh, clay uh, materials transported by the wind uh, will be forming uh, a basin like structure wherein the fine particles will be at the center and the coarser and uh, very coarse grains will be at the periphery of the takirs and takirs are uh, the accumulated fine dust uh, uh, in uh, so deserts which can be seen in typical places of deserts and uh, the periphery will always be having coarser fragments in takirs. Takir is also a depositional feature created by uh, the wind. So, today we have seen uh, the erosional, uh, transportational, depositional activity of the wind and wind can uh, uh, be a very effective geological agent uh, wherein uh, the landforms are generated by wind depending upon the mass available on the land surface. So, the bursions, the dunes and other structures which we are expecting over the land surface are generated by winds and the lawyers deposits or takir deposits are created by wind. Wind is a dynamic geological agent. Uh, the activity of wind varies from place to place and also with reference to time. Uh, wind can enact time variant changes on the landscapes and wind erosion is a major problem in several parts of the world and uh, vegetation can control uh, the erosion of uh, wind. And uh, wind is a powerful agent where wind energy can be generated by uh, the typical velocity of wind which we get it. And wind energy can be generated depending upon the zones where we get the uh, frequent and uh, regular blowing of wind. And wind energy is being harnessed in different places. Wind uh, is having both destructive and constructive mechanisms. And today we have seen the erosional and depositional features of wind. Wind is an effective geological agent. Thank you.